Hello, buddy. Welcome back to another episode. I'm back with Bhushita today. So, Bhushita Huja is an author, co-founder of Samveda Chess, motivational speaker, and uh, a world record holder. So, thank you very, very much for being here. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. My thank pleasure. You. Yes. So before we begin and get into any conversation, that would be great. Uh, if you could, you know, tell us more about yourself, what you do, um, and all of all of that. Yeah, please. Definitely. So uh, I'm Bhushita Huja this side. I'm 17 years old. I'm currently studying in 12th grade. And um, I started playing chess when I was seven years old. And it's been almost 10 years since I've been playing this sport. Mm -hmm. And chess is like my passion. I have um, given so many hours to this sport that in 2019, I decided that, you know, I wanted to um, do something more do something more than just play the sport and that's where the idea of Samvedna came in and I wanted to teach chess to the underprivileged sections of the society and I wanted to give others the opportunities to pursue this game at a professional level and I wanted to spread my passion basically far and wide and that's how I started Samvedna and at the present moment, we are teaching 400 plus underprivileged kids across seven states in India. And yes, I have also written a book which is based on clothing psychology and it's called Open Your Wardrobe for Answers. I was very fascinated about this subject, so I decided to write a book on it. And I, um, being a social entrepreneur, I have been invited by multiple colleges and multiple corporates to talk about my journey as a social entrepreneur at this age and yes that's been my journey wonderful wonderful yeah so um so it was like uh, you you started uh, teaching chess to underprivileged students i would say around uh, 14 15 right yes yes wonderful wonderful yes so thank you very much for bringing that up um so why, you know, um, why did you think chess can be a medium? Chess is a medium or can be a medium to, uh, you know, like, wh why did you think that I should teach chess to underprivileged kids? What was right. the first idea you studied it for? Right. So there are two reasons, basically, why, you know, we chose chess. Um, number one, you know, chess has been our passion we know a lot about chess and therefore teaching we can only teach what we are good at and we have a lot of resources available in this field so uh, it makes it easier for us to do something in this spectrum but also chess has given us so much as players it has really really shaped our personality inculcated numerous life skills um, I could name some Chess has taught me problem solving skills. It has uh, made me a patient individual. It has taught me hard work. It has uh, taught me time management. And in general, any sport uh, that you pursue can have a really, you know, uh, impactful, uh, it can really impact your life in a positive way because it makes you disciplined. And discipline is something very, very important that everyone should have in life so um and also chess as a sport it's a mental battle that is uh you know experienced and therefore it has had a really good impact on our academics also because we've been playing chess our academics has never suffered it has always been good so we thought that you know teaching this game to um the, you know underprivileged kids well deserving kids will also help improve them at academics and also make them you know uh, help them grow their personality wonderful wonderful really really uh, you know it's, it's very interesting to hear feels nice and really glad that you're doing doing wonderful work uh, in that space um and so what were your what were the problems when you were teaching chess like uh, the other like, thing is it's uh, for me when i when i was learning chess in the first place it was like kind of confusing what goes first how does things work where yes. where does the horse go where does the elephant go all of those things yes. were kind of um, you know i was not getting that part Completely. yeah so how, Completely. what were your challenges of teaching uh, students yes. and what was challenges of yourself learning it right so um, i think 
you know, when we started playing uh, as players, I'll talk about the challenges we faced as players first, then I'll talk about, you know, teaching it to the kids. So as players, um, I think we were taught just, you know, as a hobby, it was not exactly our, uh, my mom taught me how to play chess, my brother and me both. And she had read in a parenting book that, you know, teaching your kids chess is very good. It helps improve their memory. And just like carom, snakes and ladders and all, she taught us how to play this game. We got very interested in it and we were like playing against each other all the time. And that's how we, you know, um, got into the game. But earlier, we used to play against people and, you know, we used to lose and it would discourage us because we were very young and always, you know, winning and losing mattered a lot. We didn't realize that participation was what was important. We used to be very concerned about the result of the game. So it would put us down sometimes. But yeah, and then we also took part in one of our um, internal in you know, inter-school competition and we we were taught chess in a more casual way and professional chess is much different. So we didn't know moves like castling and all and then when the, our opponents castled, we were like, what is happening? We, do, we don't know this move. So uh, we there were a lot of gaps that were there. We were sometimes very disappointed why we lost because we didn't know how to play. Then finally, we joined an academy and we started learning chess professionally and uh, when we were under the guidance of a coach and a mentor then everything was taught to us you know properly and then we were able to take up the game very well and uh, improve in it quite uh, you know consistently Mm -hmm. as uh, as you know why as teachers and as uh, you know by when we were teaching underprivileged kids this Court, then I think the major, major um, problem we faced was in trying to uh, foster the interest towards the sport because uh, people, you know, they play cricket, they play badminton, all those games that are fun to, you know, play. And this game is a little complicated and it uses a lot of brain power. And uh, many kids, they don't want to uh, spend too much time thinking and, you know, solving positions and all of that. So we needed to create interest and we needed to uh, foster that because earlier, I remember when we initially started our classes, we had very low attendance. And gradually, you know, our attendance built up and it went up to 85%, which is great. And especially, you know, dealing with underprivileged sections, I think that is a wonderful attendance to have. But earlier, it was extremely low. And how we improved it was um, we started customizing the classes as per the uh, tastes of the kids, as per the, you know, requirements that we saw. We kept uh, evolving our course and what curriculum we followed because, um, you know, we had a structure and if we kept following the structure as per the syllabus, then the kids would lose interest. We had to involve activities. We had to make it engaging. We had to do some sort of competitions, provide some sort of incentives. And that were, those were the strategies we followed to, uh, you know, make everyone interested in uh, learning the sport. Mm-hmm. And and how how is it going now? So it's going great, and like I said, the attendance has really really increased, and you know, so many kids are, uh, you know, they keep texting the coach to give more positions and to you know uh, have another class. So there was um, there is one class that used to happen just uh, once a week, and the kids were so you know they they didn't want to wait for seven days for the class to happen. So they all together requested the coach that so we want to do classes more often. So from once a week, it went to thrice a week and the classes are being being offered free of cost without any, you know, there's no fee that is charged because kids are from, uh, you know, humble backgrounds, but the coaches seeing the interest of the kids, they have, um, you know, they are ready to spend, you know, three hours uh, in their week teaching the kids this game. So that is really commendable. Yeah, totally. Wonderful, wonderful. And congratulations, congratulations to you uh, for building Thank such you, a beautiful sir. setup and a team, you know, wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> um, and and uh, so moving forward, I would I would like to um, ask you a question about your book. Why do you think 
that you should write a book about the clues? What, what made you think to write a book about your clues? Yeah. Right. So um, I think personality analysis and, you know, uh, that is that has always been something i have loved to do know more about myself find out um, you know what exact what kind of a personality i have what kind of a nature i have how i can improve my nature that's always something that goes on in my mind and i never knew that clothing was also an indicator of your personality but one day i was just reading researching about something and i found came across this you know subject this dimension and i decided to explore it i did not think of writing a book on it at that point i just wanted to research about it because i was fascinated and intrigued and i wanted to do it for myself so i started reading about it i started reading a lot of articles a lot of um, uh, you know material on the internet and um, i found some really fascinating in information that was really interesting so i shared this the, the details i found with my parents and they uh, were also very very you know um, intrigued by this and then they uh, encouraged me to actually write a book on this subject because it was something very unique something that not many people knew about and i come from a household that has a business uh, from the fashion industry we deal with shawls so e even more the reason that i was interested in fashion and i decided that this would be a great subject to write a book on mm -hmm. wonderful wonderful and um, and when you when you when you uh, when you were an author, I, I had written a book when I was 14. Um, and when I see oh, those me. books, thank you. Yeah. So when I, when I see those books, those, that book, I sometimes do find some mistakes in it. Some things which were not, the word was not right. The way I written was not right. The sentences I had made were not right. So how, how does yes. it, how does it feel when you see your own book? Uh, and are you, so do you, when, and how do you feel when you see those things even in your book? Yeah. Right. So I, that definitely happens. There's this sense of nostalgia that's always there. Yeah. And, you know, after every few days, I'll just go and open my book and start reading what I wrote because, you know, uh, it's, it's, be, it's my first book. It's like the first time I've published something. There's a lot of self, there's, there's, there's a lot of satisfaction that's involved because uh, obviously it, it took a lot of time to uh, pen it down and then get it published and have that hard copy in my hand so it always feels good but yes like you said um uh, when I go through it I was like okay I could have included something about this also I could have probably you know explored this even in more depth and you know I uh, sometimes uh, when I look at it now I feel like I wrote quite a lot of you know uh, good quality information but I feel I could have written more I could have explored certain untapped topics in this so yes that's always there but again what I did back then was the best I could do because of how old I was and what kind of a um, you know situation I was in back then but again learnings are always there and they should be positively taken so that in my next book in my next venture I can use those learnings and not repeat the same mistakes. Yes totally totally yeah and so um, yeah, so so more. What what would be uh, you know your your advice to anybody who wishes to become an author and wishes to start writing? What would you, what were your learnings right. from writing? Right. So I think um, you know uh, as an author, um, very important. It's very important to be very planned when you are writing a book because uh, at times you are you tend to get lost because there's so much material on the internet and there is so much information. Though there is a whole hub of information, you have to choose what you want to write. I'm talking about nonfiction books here, and um, yeah, so you need to be very careful what information you're including whether that's bias 
biased if, if that is outdated what sources you are using and um, time management is important you need to plan out how your book has to be it's like uh, you know entrepreneurs create business plans before starting a company they have to formulate a structure so that they follow that and it gives them a sense of purpose and direction similar to that even authors need to have a sort of business plan for their book and they need to conduct market research for their book because um, you need to know what competition is there what is available what is it that you are bringing to the table because at this point, you know, there are so many authors in the world that there is a lot of content available. And if you want your book to be successful, then you have to have a USP, a unique selling point, and you have to have something different that you are doing from others and, you know, something that is benefiting your readers. So you need to make that clear and you need to know um, uh, you're off beating your competition and any um you know and then after that you write your book and you uh you know your style you follow your style you don't uh you know mix up that because your style of writing is what is going to uh you know connect with the readers and finally i think uh you know, a book, writing a book is one aspect, but then marketing that book is another aspect. So you need to pay a lot of attention in formulating the right strategies to uh, make your book, uh, you know, successful and reach out to numerous readers across the world. So for that, you need to have this zeal and passion that your, um, you, your journey doesn't end after you get the book published. It starts there yeah. and you have a lot to do to actually, you know, make the book successful. Successful. Totally, totally. Yeah, so just, just one more question I would like to put up here is what would be your message to the listeners, to the pe people who are listening this, watching this? Sure. So um, I think if I'm giving a general message, um, you know, about general uh, life, then I'd say that, um, you know, you need to understand opportunity costs uh, very well in life because that is something that has always helped me to grow and to, you know, stand apart from the generic crowd. Because if you understand that there are a lot of opportunity uh, costs involved in whatever you do, then you start giving more attention and more time to, uh, you know, whatever you do. And you focus on that. You don't waste a lot of time because you know that if you waste your time now, that time is not going to come back. And you need to choose, make the right kind of decisions as to what, you know, you want to do in your day with whether you're going to watch Netflix or whether you're going to complete writing a chapter chapter of your book that is a decision you have to make and again there is an opportunity cost involved so you need to prioritize if you want to be successful you need to know where to draw a line because if you're going to go off the track then you're not going to be able to achieve your goals so yeah. you need to have the passion you need to know where you want to be and you need to constantly self-motivate yourself to keep moving in that path because you can get motivation everywhere from, you know, there is a lot of motivational content available, but the motivation that really gets you there comes from within and from yourself. So that is very, very important. And I think um, in life, very, it's very important to be happy because uh, there is no value to life if you are not happy in it. And I think happiness um, can be achieved from self-satisfaction and self-satisfaction can be achieved if you're working hard hard and if you are pursuing your dreams and if you're putting in your best foot forward so I think it's important to live you live your life in a way that you know you don't want to take a vacation from it your life yeah. should be that happening and um, you should feel happy uh, about whatever you've done during your day when you're sleeping at night so that is something that I live by.
Yep, and also one more thing and also one more thing that you know a lot of times we are result oriented and we focus on the outcomes but it's important to focus on the process and the effort because results are not in your hands yeah. and even the bhagavad gita says that so we should focus on giving in our 100% and if we do that then definitely we are going you know in the right direction totally thank totally. you yeah thank you thank you very much for joining me uh, it's a pleasure thank to have you, you. So i'm really glad that i had a chance to talk to you about your work and everything you do uh, thank you very very much really, really really glad that you joined me thank you very much again thank you